And now we are really about the question of sustainability for you. There are reasons because very few people actually manage their own money. Too much work, fear of losing my whole investment. I think we could already stop here. <laughs> no understanding of the market. Overwhelming. Uh, sorry, I have to show it to you, of course. Fear, yes. So let's start first with the question. So it's really a lot of work, I would say. It's very complicated, so it's, it's, it's know-how, it's loss, the topic of loss, topic of know-how, and the topic of work. And I would like to actually focus on that now, which means we can probably stop this again. Let's stop it. Um, let's make an exercise on loss aversion. I have this from Credit Suisse, by the way, I like Credit Suisse a lot now. My son just got a job there. So that's changed everything. <laughs> um, starting his apprenticeship this summer. And it's really exciting what Credit Suisse does for young people. Um, they made an exercise with me. Let's assume we bet. We make a bet. We bet with a coin. I have a coin here. And so it's a 50% chance to win or lose. If you win, you get 10 francs from me. If you lose, you pay me 3 francs. Be honest now, I'm not going to single you out. Who would do that bet with me right now? No, no, okay, no, no, actually, <laughs> okay, you can actually put it down. So 10% will not do it, 89 will do it. Should I lock it? Yes. Let's go to the next question. 6 francs. You have to pay me 6 francs. And I'll pay you 10 francs. <laughs> okay. Now, you do it for real. You have to raise your hand if you don't want to bet. It's 10 against 9. Who would do the bet with me? I pay 10. If you lose, you pay me 9 francs. Who does not want to participate? I not, after I pay someone, it does. Nobody, and I cannot pick you. Is, is somebody, is somebody that would have, would have done the bet? Who would have done it? Okay, I'll, I'll pay you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to throw the dice? The expectancy value of that bet, how much was it? The expectancy value was 50 cents. You would have gotten my 10 francs. 50 cents because you can lose with the 50%, you can lose 4 and a half francs. With the 50%, you can win 5 francs. The thing is, and we have already seen it here, losing hurts a lot. You know? And, you know, this is really brave of you. You're probably very rational here, and so like, you know, this just doesn't make sense, you know. But most of us are really emotional. And this is one of the biggest reasons, the most important reason, why you should give the money to someone else. Because most people behave wrong when it comes to uh, investing. If you have to decide, do you like this market or this, you know, economy better than this one, most will actually say, I like this one a lot better. But the opportunity lies here. You see? When it's down, you know, when actually the markets are bad, then you have opportunity. And one of the biggest costs in self-investing is actually that you exit here and you buy here. And the question now is, how can you avoid that, avoid that fear of losing money? The fact is, you do lose, you do lose money. I've worked with that problem now for a while and I found a couple of interesting insights that help you control your emotions better. The first is, there was from a friend that also started high school that went to Bank Vegarin, which unfortunately does not exist anymore. But he showed me that 
the Great Depression actually created wealth, and he showed that by a picture which, which is now part of my advertising material. So if you've invested in 1929 a certain amount, and you look at what the index actually did, you know, the index actually you know, dropped a lot, you know, to maybe 30% or 20% of its value in 2000, in 1933, then we covered a little bit, it was really down, all the way down to 1954. The normal reading of that chart is, this was really bad. If I had invested my money here in 1929, I would have to wait until 1954 until I had my money back. But this friend from Italy told me this is the wrong picture because you get dividends every year. You have to assume that you reinvest those dividends. And when you reinvest those dividends, you're actually up here. There's something that you completely forget, that low market prices, a crashing market creates buying opportunities. So you have to find a way of not looking, of not worrying about this, of not doing here the wrong thing, just to stay invested, to take the dividends, reinvest them, you get more money, and if we hypothetically assumed that there would have been no crash, that we would have a straight line, the index would have not lost any money until 1954, we would have less money. It's amazing. I mean, it's, it's an amazing, that, that you, when you start to realize that the crash is good for you, that at the end of a certain period, you'll have more money than without the crash. It becomes less threatening. As a matter of fact, I've done an exercise then on Excel. If we have a straight line over some time, you know, you get this return. Uh, no, straight line, you get this return again, the same picture. But if it is volatile, you get a much higher return. Because every time here, you buy more shares than you would not buy here when it's expensive. And when you look at this picture, you think like maybe volatility isn't that bad. It's actually a good thing. There was this other case where, you know, another friend of mine worked for Pricewaterhouse and, you know, they had, for some reason, they had a very special uh, pension fund. Normally, pension fund is, has an insurance component, so you're pretty safe with the money in the pension fund is what you get out. But Pricewaterhouse negotiated a deal with the pension authorities and the tax authorities that they could have a fund that just goes up and down, whatever. And then my friend had this situation um, that his partner, one of the partners, had to exit in 2009. So, at the, really, at the very bottom of the market. And he told me, it's really terrible. You know, we have this fund that is not just secure. It went up and down and up and down. And at the end, when he left for retirement, he was down. He lost so much money versus the year before. What he forgets is, what he completely forgets is this picture. He made a lot more money beforehand. So even if you lose at the end, you should not look at this. You should look at what you had made with a fund that is less volatile, but is a much lower return. And that, did you get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that forgot another picture. We are not saving today and never for the next 30 years. We are saving every year. And I made a very interesting calculation. What happens if you invested every year in the worst markets of the world? You know, maybe you're too young for, for the pigs countries. You know the pigs, the twin pigs? It's about 10 years ago and Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain had the big crisis. These were really bad markets. And what I did then is I looked, you know, how much uh, would I have made in those markets over the last 20 years if I invested the same amount every year? Where you save? And it turns out, with the exception of Greece, you would have money. One, one extreme case is actually uh, in Italy, which right now when you go to a bank, they would not recommend Italian stocks because, you know, the index went from like 2000 all the way down to now about half in 2016. That was when I did the research. So they would say like, this is a really terrible market, don't go there, and all the political you know, issues. But when you actually invest it every year, you know, you profit from low, from low um, situations in the market. And it turns out that when, from the 100 you invest, it's, it's readjusted. So here it's one time 100, you know, and here it's two times. And, and you actually calculate how much you got out. So it's compared to 100% is what you put in, and what you actually see is your wealth. And even in Italy, you made about 22% return. Oh, that was really the worst case. In Portugal, you made more return than in Switzerland. Because in Switzerland, the market never crashed. So if you invest every year, the picture becomes a lot less dangerous.